Right now at 6, winter weather hits the northwest with the potential for serious ice and snow later this week. Recommending Oregonians have an emergency plan for up to 72 hours without essential services. What you need to know to stay safe at home and out on the roads. Plus, more flights canceled after last week's blowout in the skies. Why Max 9 planes are being grounded even longer. And the end of an era in Seattle. And for a variety of reasons, um, we, we have mutually agreed uh, to set a new course. Why Seahawks fans likely have not seen the last of Pete Carroll after 14 years on the sideline. Thanks so much for joining us at 6. I'm David Molko. We begin with a blizzard in the mountains and a first taste of snow for the hills, with things now looking pretty interesting for the valley and beyond later this week with the coldest air of the season now on the way. And that means the possibility of wind, rain, ice, snow, or as we have seen in the past, all of the above. We have team coverage tonight with Ashley Grahams in Clark County, John Adams in Southwest Portland. But let's get started with Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino. So Matt, you have been tracking this next storm closely all week. What is the forecast and timing looking like right now? It's looking more likely that we get some really cold air and at least some snow. Now there are some differences about how much snow we could get and how quickly it might end, but it's going to get very cold and I think we're going to get at least a little bit of snow. This is by far the coldest weather we've seen you know, since last winter easily, and it's going to get messy as we go through Friday night into Saturday. Say the good thing is tomorrow, no problem. A lot like today, so use tomorrow. Make use of that time and the good roads to prepare because you're probably not going to want to drive anytime really as early as Saturday midday or sorry, Friday midday through Saturday. So be prepared for that. This is going to get really cold. There's a winter storm watch up for the valley here for the Portland area until Saturday at 6 p.m. That begins Friday afternoon and a winter storm watch up for almost all of the state where there isn't already winter storm warning in the east side of the Cascades in northeast Oregon for snow falling tonight and tomorrow and all of the Cascades will continue to get snow it actually picks up a bit tomorrow. So let's go through this. This is beginning Friday at, well in the morning. It's at one o'clock now Friday afternoon. And this model already shows Portland down to 26 degrees and the east wind kicking in here, but a west wind still just south of Portland and Salem still above freezing while we're in the 20s, right? So that's one o'clock on Friday afternoon, but watch how this progresses. The temperatures drop down the valley. The snow batch moves farther south and west. I don't know if we'll be in the teens as early as 10 o'clock Friday night, but we'll be in the 20s at that point. And look at the numbers in eastern Oregon down to one in Baker City and into the single digits in Pendleton by Saturday morning too. And the snow or snow or sleet continues in the Portland area into the morning hours of Saturday and possibly later in the day on Saturday. So bottom line, as I see it right now, and keep in mind this may change this forecast. A lot of details still need to come into focus, but right now I'd say snow begins in the Portland area midday Friday noonish or so. Temperatures will fall throughout the day on Friday, leading to those temperatures in the 20s by Friday night. And in the gorge, yep, the blizzard word is back. Brutal winds, snow, blowing snow in the gorge. It's going to make travel there really treacherous. So a lot going on as we go into the long weekend, David. And either way, it's going to be messy. Thank you, Matt. Let's bring in Ashley Grabs now live in the center. Ashley, before we dig deeper on what is coming, no pun intended there, uh, how is it looking right now where you are? North of Vancouver, Washington here, one of the hardest hit areas and that snow still sticking around. We talked to some people who woke up to this winter wonderland this morning, but they also had to deal with the impacts like down trees. Tuesday night's storm brought the first snow of the season to many in southwest Washington and western Oregon. This was the view for morning commuters in the West Hills near Portland on Wednesday. But even heavier snow fell north of Vancouver, Washington. Typically this time of year when the snowstorms hit or wind storms, we lose power once or twice a year. Snow, rain and wind bringing down trees across the region. This one in La Center, Washington, crashing down on a power line. This morning you could see a, a line dangling. So they closed the road and then the tree service came, cut the branches and then the utility guys were down there. Further south in Clackamas County, Oregon. It looks like top of the tree is impacted right here on the gutters and part of the roof. It looks like it's bowing a little bit. Another tree branched down, this one crushing a shed. We're all about getting it out of here because uh, it's definitely a problem and hopefully it doesn't come down and, and damage any other of our neighbors' homes. 
tree trimmers already getting to work trying to clear this mess before the next storm. Yeah, we got more weather coming. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm a little nervous for that. Those in Washington thinking the same thing, preparing for what's next. So I think they're being pretty proactive and trying to trim everything before the next yeah, storm Yeah, maybe the uh, next few days we won't lose power. So I wanted to give you guys a look here at what's left on the ground. You can see a lot of this snow really starting to break up. That's because we are starting to see some rain. So for those of you who need to travel roads right now, not looking snowy, they're just looking wet. If you need to travel, now is the time to do it uh, before we head into that next storm. If you need to clean up like some of those folks we talked to today, I think the next 40, 24 hours are the time to do it. David? Yeah, because that next storm is definitely coming. Thank you, Ashley. Let's turn away from the rear view mirror and look forward formally toward what is coming. John Adams joining us as well. He is in Southwest Portland. Uh, John Pacific Power now telling people to prepare for what they call a worst case scenario. It sounds pretty ominous. What do they mean? Well, David, Pacific Power was just one of the numerous organizations I spoke with today that all had the same message for residents here in the area. Now is the time to make sure you have that severe weather kit and that power outage kit in your home and ready to go in advance of that storm. So let's take a look at some of the items that you need to have in that kit and ready to go. PGE recommends having a flashlight or a headlamp with fresh batteries, a battery powered or hand crank radio and an alarm clock and a watch. And this next one is super important as well. Make sure you fully charge your cell phone and electronic devices and have vehicle charters ready to go for them if the power, if you do run out of power with them. With those freezing temperatures on the way as well, extra blankets should be ready to go and enough bottled water for the people and the pets in your household. PGE says they're also formulating a game plan to deal with potential outages. Staging the right resources where we think the biggest impact is going to be bringing in additional crews and things like that. So that if uh, that storm does cause outages, we're ready to quickly re um, react. This is the key. Well, David, another challenge of this storm that we've been talking about is that potential for an extended period of freezing temperatures. Now, Portland Fire and Rescue gave us information earlier today on how homeowners can shut off the water to their home if they experience a burst pipe. And we're going to have those instructions up on our website, KGW.com, for folks at home to go check those out. David? You have a feeling hardware and grocery stores will be busy tomorrow. Thank you, John. And to stay on top of the latest forecast and get breaking weather alerts for your area, be sure to download the KGW app. Matt's going to be back with your full forecast coming up in less than 10 minutes. Let's get to your headlines this evening. Detectives are investigating the death of a man who was shot by police in Gresham. This was last night at the Golden Knight Motel on East Powell Boulevard. Investigators say someone reported a man kicking in a door to one of the rooms. While police aren't saying anything else about what led up to the shooting, witnesses told us that man attacked somebody in the room and then was shot by officers. We will update you as we learn more. Well, on the heel of that door plug blowout over Portland, Alaska Airlines has now extended its cancellations of all flights on the Boeing 737 MAX 9 through Saturday. United Airlines has also granted the planes under order of the FAA. The companies are awaiting updated instructions from Boeing and federal officials on exactly how to carry out inspections of the 170 plus MAX 9s in their fleets. That's after both airlines reported finding loose bolts and other issues with some of the door plugs during the initial inspection. So this afternoon, the Transportation Secretary declined to put a timeline on when they might fly again, only saying it would not happen until, quote, it is safe. Milwaukee police will not face any criminal charges after a man died in their custody. This is body cam video released from the incident as officers were taking Jean Michael Descamps from Providence Milwaukee Hospital to a behavioral health center. They were called in by hospital staff who said Descamps refused to leave, but by the time they got to the health center, he was unresponsive. The medical examiner called his death an overdose with contributing natural causes. The Multnomah County DA's office says there is no evidence officers did anything to cause his death, instead calling this event a medical event only. Tonight, 11 will take a closer look at the DA's report and accusations. Descamps never should have been released from the hospital.
Well, a brand new building for the Multnomah County Library is set to open in Northeast Portland, and the hope is it will improve operations for the entire system. The building near 122nd and Burnside is an operations hub. That means it's processing new books and transferring books to different branches, and it's a base for community outreach projects. Sydney Dorner joins us now with a closer look. Sydney. Yes, David, this all started in 2015 when the Multnomah County Library came up with a capital plan that they presented to voters for a bond. Now that money is going towards nine big expansions and renovations that are pushing the idea of what we normally think a library can provide. Everything about this is new. The Multnomah County Library is opening up a new cutting edge operation center. The center is where new books and materials come into the library system and features an automated handling system that will free up library staff to have more time to interact with the public. We send millions of items around the system every year and up until this project, uh, that was all done manually by hand. The operations center is the home to all library staff that provide community services, like their mobile van that brings Wi-Fi, laptops, and books right to your front step. It's a big barrier for people who are in poverty or people who are working multiple jobs and trying to take care of a family. Transportation is a challenge or just managing your schedule. So we are taking library services to the point of need. Multnomah County Library says they are working on renovating 11 libraries and opening up a central library in February. Their new approach takes into account the mental health and security of both employers and patrons. And so we've lowered all the bookshelf heights and created much, much better what we call sight lines so it's easier to know who's in the space, what they're doing, where your colleagues are in the space. So that's a really significant part of that. The operation center even features a public bookstore called Rose City Reads, where you can find used and affordable books. Proceeds from all of the books go towards the library. Back to you, David. Hey, love that idea, a public bookstore. Thank you, Sydney. Coming up on KGW News tonight, is your vehicle ready for driving in ice and snow? And what happens if you get stuck for hours or get stranded? Yeah, we've seen it happen before. Just ahead, advice on getting prepared right now. And coming up at 630 on the story, a look at the behind the scenes drama and political finger pointing that seems to have plagued the Portland Fire Bureau's street response program. Pat's going to dive into a recent audit and sees how Fire Commissioner Renee Gonzalez is responding. That's just ahead at 630.